Hello and welcome. Cedric and Cedric here. CR Wrestling Commentary. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Best of the Super Juniors Day 8. And this is us making it. We're making it. We're doing it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Following their series like this. Hey, they got to do the work. We got to do the talking. And we got to overcome our uh, Cedra's work schedule. My awakened stuff schedule. My illnesses schedule. And all this other stuff. But we do this day in and day out. Trying to, you know, see what y'all like. You know, get questions or or comments from y'all and you know maybe have a little enjoyment responding to them or giving them a like and whatnot and stuff um so let's get into this okay so our, our first match here is the doki versus ishimori taiji and this match you know what i'm honest with you this started off kind of brutal but then it just it just went away the brutality went away and then picked back up. Ishimori started in with his shoulder tip, getting the pads off the uh, corner, throwing Doki into the corner shoulder first, and Doki was writhing on the mat. And, you know, Taiji, you know, a couple of more arm moves and then stopped. Just stopped, went into his regular rep repertoire. Doki goes into his. Doki not doing that Lucha Libre thing looked so much better in the ring. He looked like a wrestler. He looked like he belongs in that ring, not some garbage wrestling outfit. Doki looked good. He need to leave that Lucha Libre crap alone. It's not him. I, I get that he can do it, and he had every natural movement that a lucha daughter would have but when it comes to looking competitive and looking like he belongs in a certain outfit this was it if he went to Consejo Mundial de Lucha Libre or Triple A and he did that the Lucha Libre stuff it'd be spot on but that's not where he is so this right here with Taiji Shimori it looked really good and Doki yeah he got his shit in too but then he had to ignore that his arm was damaged and so, uh, but later, Ishimori, he goes back to that arm, and Doki's doing his best to uh, evade it. They go into attempted finishes. They counter each other very well. It flowed smoothly. I enjoyed that. And honestly, it piqued my interest in this match. Um, and then uh, Ishimori, that satellite head scissors armbar takedown, and he slammed that into the mat. He, he hit strong with that move. And I thought he was going for the crossface, but nope. He didn't do that. You know, he put on the other move. And when he did, um that head and that that I don't know, that that side triangle choke, he put that on. And I thought Doki, you know, I was like, that's it. But Doki started getting to the ropes. Taiji rolled him away, which is what, what sometimes we call the young lion doom. You know, that, that young lion doom roll. And he did that and Doki tapped. He tapped out. It was brutal. Ishimori now has to brush his hair out of his face. You know, let it grow out. He, he, must, he must be feeling the, 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 the love of the fans saying that he's the cutest one in New Japan. So it is what it is, right? Um, so <laughs> that that's gonna do it for this. Probably wondering where Cedra is on commentary. She she was here, but she 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 went to sleep real quick. It's been a long day. She's been up since like one thirty a.m. It's going on seven forty four p.m. So it's been a long day. I didn't expect her to say anything, and I thought I'd just roll through this real quick. Sorry. So. <laughs> I ain't got to say sorry. They understand. They forgive you. They love you. They love you. They forgive you. So, with that said, we're going to get on to this next match here of the Best of Super Juniors Day 8. And look, before this, please, I want to honestly apologize for getting these days out of order consecutively for the past what, three days. Once they were uploaded in this weird fashion, it threw us off. Yeah. You know, that has been throwing us off and we haven't collected ourselves and we're doing this back to back. So we record, do what we can, 
some go to sleep or um, they got to eat time to cook or clean up because it's just that messy or whatnot. But we are just, I think we're getting it now because Super Juniors started this off. So they lead the day, not in the day. So we're right on this. This should be best of the Super Juniors day eight. Okay, so I'm going to apologize for that. Cedra also apologizes, but right now she's being hugged by our little kid who looks like a Smurf in a hoodie. Um, so we apologize. And before we get into this next match, I'm also going to say we are certainly going to skip the match after that. You know. So this match is Yoshinobu Kanemaru versus Yo. And CJ had to remind me that Yo was still a part of Chaos. And I was like, what? And I'm mean, like, well. There's no reason to. There's nothing that has revealed that he isn't. And he's still a good guy. So there's really no reason for him to leave. And Chaos is it's not really a faction. It's, it's straight up. It's not. It's default. Yeah, it is New Japan regular default. That's about it. That's how I see it because they're in it. But what do they do? What do they do? They help each other? No. Nothing. They don't do anything. Yoshi Hashi tried to help somebody and he was out for two months after that. Um, He, he did slip. He paid for trying to help. <laughs> so he was, he, he, he he was the example. Against, don't he help. Against, he went against the grain of chaos and there you go. So... Yo versus Kanemaru Yoshinobu. And this was a really good match. It was. This was good. Kanemaru, he jump starts because you know how Suzuki Goon is. However, um, Yo had a nice little cool, uh, she tried to point it out. When he got thrown to the post and he, he swung around the post and rolled into the ring. I, I mean, it's simple, right? Mm -hmm. But it's so cool because you don't really see that. Yo has a very good sense of his body and where he is in space. And that is what a lot of high flyers are lacking. Yo knows exactly where he is at all times. He is very cognitive and he doesn't do things when he's not cognitive of it. Mm -hmm. I have noticed that there are points in the match where you know he would do a little bit of high flying or whatnot and he opts not to. So that's good. That is intelligent wrestling. We need more of that, you know. So, so yo, you, you know, thank you, man. Point that, keep pointing that, keep doing you, man. Do you? But in this case, Connie Model was doing you because he 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 worked that leg over. Yeah, he was working that leg. He he Rock turned kicks and and figure fours. Anything he could do other than gnawing on the knee, he did. I mean, he should have bit him. He should have bit the leg. He pulled that knee pad down and just bit it. Yep, it would have made sense because he did everything else. Should just put the knee pad, ah, and that's it. Just, just bite him. But um, I'm gonna say this: Yo mounted his comebacks very well. There was a spot, and the camera angle messes messes with it. But this is after another spot. But I gotta pull this out first. Yo was on defense. Connie Mardo comes in, just satellite head scissors. And it looks like Yo countered and slammed him. But it was Connie Mardo delivering a DDT. Mm -hmm. I, that's one reason. Satellite head scissors is cool. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna do a DDT, it's got to look obvious. You know, Yo had his arm around Kanemaru, and from our angle, if you saw this match, it looked like he slammed Kanemaru like a Sambo slam, but it was a DDT instead. If it was the other ca uh, camera angle, if it was the adjacent one, then we'd be saying, oh, it was a DDT, because it would have looked like it. Yeah, but his arm across Kanemaru was loose. If it was a Sambo slam, it would have been a very loose one on his part. Yeah, but it, I'm just saying, at first glance, yeah. you would think, well, what happened? Because that's exactly where we were. And we had an idea that it was a DDT, but uh, you had to look back. Before that, <laughs> I was like, ref, are you, <laughs> there is nothing that can get a DQ. Because I was like, this is, it's like Connie Marlowe just grabbed Yo by his nuts and picked him up 
and <laughs> face busted him. <laughs> That's what it looked like. But no, he grabbed, he reached under him, grabbed the top of his his tights, and then picked him up and slammed them. You had to rewind that like three times. I'm like, yeah. did he just just grab this man's nuts and pick him up? <laughs> Like, he's surprisingly calm for this yeah, process. Yeah, I was like, he's shouldn't he be wiggling, yelling like, "Oh Lord, something!" No, nah, but okay, cool. Kanemaru, I wish he could hear this. Don't do that again. Just, just, just leave the crotchal region alone for your setup moves. <laughs> the only reason you need to go there is a cheat, low blow or something. But if there's a move where you got to from behind grab a man's nuts. I don't know what move that could be, but it need not be done unless it's a finishing move. Yeah, that's for the win right there. That's for the win. You reach from behind and grab a motherfucker's necks. No, nah, so, all right. The match kept going. Kanemaru tried deep impact, but he missed. They went through the exchanges, but then it got twisted, and they went counter for counter until... Yo rolled him up, bridged back, trapping his arms, and I mean the commentary called it a five star clutch. And I thought that, I thought that was just Fire Pro just trying to misname something so they don't get I guess sued or so I don't know. But no, they called it a five star clutch and Yo pins Kanemaru for the win. It was a good win. And it was a really and good you win. You would think that he had won the whole thing. He was happy. Happy, happy, happy. He celebrated on Turnbuckle and fell out into the ring. Yeah, you thought he just won the title. But hey, I'm glad he won. And getting these wins are very important for Yo to establish himself as a singles competitor. Yes. He's been one for a little bit, but this is really going to help. And I hope New Japan can use him. Shinya Honpuro Desu needs to use him better. And this can help. Okay, so the following match is... El Fantasmo versus Taguchi Ryusuke. And um, you know what? We, yeah, we, we skipped it, but we also got to be able to tell you how it ended. And Taguchi was tied up in the ropes. El Fantasmo goes for a thrust kick. Taguchi evades. Ta- uh, Fantasmo is... Files out like he hurt his ball. Because, you know, he, he missed. And he straddles the middle rope. Very poorly, but plays that he hurt his nuts. Taguchi scrambles in, goes for the pin. And El Fantasma will kick out with a strong, I would say, grounded European uppercut to the to the balls. So Taguchi's hurt there. He gets the, uh, El Fantasma does something to the ref, look over there or something. The ref just look away. And then he does a thrust kick to Taguchi's balls. Taguchi drops down on his knees. El Fantasma places a, um, a kneeling wrist lock to Taguchi which in any other time you could just kind of roll out of that's what you, you do in a situation like that when they twist that wrist that twisting wrist lock but Taguchi instead started smacking his own butt in symboling of tapping out instead of tapping the mat tap the mat first oh he did mm-hmm. okay like he, he just like he just reached back and started tapping his own ass okay so he taps the mat taps then taps his ass mm-hmm. and the referee because he was tapping his butt, then the referee was like, he surrenders. That's what I saw, but okay. I mean, in either case, tapping Matt, tapping butt, he taps out. El Fantasma win, and I'm glad I didn't have to see such an abortion of a match, so that's me. Let's go. Alright, next match, next match is Robbie Eagles versus Show. Uh, personally, the first three quarters of this match, didn't even care. I, I just, it, too much cooperation. You know, show waiting for a move to happen. It's, that's a, it's aggravating. It really is. Um, but at least show in the beginning shows how much of a baddie he is. When there was a crash and burn on one of the young lions and show just looking at him and laughing. Pointing and laughing. Oh yeah, his point fault too. <laughs> um, it was it was for the most part it was decent. Um, it wasn't a full flippy floppy match. Um, Robbie stayed on the ground most of the time. He did a lot of rolling to get away, which was cool. But he was targeting Show's knee, and he did a very good job. Um, Show tried to target his hand and and arm, and he did some damage, but not as much damage as Robbie did to his knee. Um. 
Of course, the ref gets knocked down. Show goes for the wrench. He gets messed up. <laughs> he, he's trying to show's trying to drag himself to the back because his knee is messed up. Uh, he gets messed up. Uh, Rabbit grabs the wrench. There's nothing with it. They go back and forth, back and forth. He puts um. I don't know what kind of uh, leg submission move he put him in. It was an inverted figure four. Okay, so Robbie put him in an inverted figure four, and he was screaming for dear life, and then he rolled and put some more torque on it, and the show tapped out. Joe had that look like, oh, my lord, it's too much. Mm -hmm. It's too much. Just And when he tapped, uh, when he tapped, he had that look like, this is off the hook pain. Yes. And as soon as Robbie started letting him go, he looked like, Oh, oh, relief. <laughs> Absolute unmitigated relief. <laughs> the last quarter of this match was outright outstanding. Okay, so it's worth the wait, but it was outstanding. Just uh, the build up to it was a little herky jerky and see-through is not exactly a thing that I like, but it was good once it got to that final phase. So it's worth it. It's worth it. So we're going to get on with the next thing. So let's roll. Let's roll. Okay, so next match, Takahashi Hiromu versus Master Wato. Um, it was a good match. Yeah, it was a good match. But I'm going to say this. I think New Japan Pro Wrestling is finding their love for Hiromu. And... You know, because he, what's Hiromu's shtick? What's his main thing? Have epic matches where he gets brutalized. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, and it's not like he just get ran over. No, it's, it's a more or less back and forth, but he gets messed up. He fights to the bitter end. And that's exactly what he's been doing. Now, Master Wato, um, now see, Cedric got a thing against Tai Chi because he stole... Uh, Kawada's move set, but then you know he's released some of those moves and using others. Yeah, so that's cool. Let's see, Master Wato. Okay, he's got the the Tenzan Tombstone Driver, and for all intents and purposes, Tenzan's the first one to do a Tombstone, and that was it. Then he used the seated version. Okay, so Wato's gotten that from him. Then you got the Sky Twister Press from Chaparita Asai that he uses. And then there's, um, so he, so Wato's using that. He's got that high angle German suplex that the original Tiger Mask was using. So he's gotten that. So, I mean, it's like he's taking moves from those that he would consider the absolute greatest that he must have, because people get it, it's, each to their own who's great and who's not um so i'm i'm seeing wato i'm, I'm starting i'm starting to i'm, I'm, I'm waking up to him I'm, I'm getting there i'm getting there <laughs> um but this match it was it was brutal it was brutal they they punished each other they did um it was good yes wato missed the Sky Twister Press. I feel like he fell, fell head first to the mat. And it looked like it. It so looked like he just spun and crashed and twisted on his head. But the speed he was moving, if his head connected solidly, he would have snapped his neck. That's that high level of speed he had. But no, his hair was just on the mat and brushed it really well, covering his face. Other than that, you'd have thought he was mess- he'd have busted his head all up. <laughs> um, and maybe he did. He just played it off. There was another spot where he was trying to get that leaping crucifix driver, and Hinomu was like, "No, no," and he was like, "Okay, then octopus stretch." <laughs> I like that. And then just moments later. Driver, he got the crucifix driver, and I like that move. I like the way Wado does it. It took him a while to get there, but he's doing it great now. You're seeing progress with him, and that's that's cool. Yes, I'm enjoying this. I would say 
summer next year, I'm not going to say he had fully found himself, but with what he's going with today, I'll say it'd be complete. Because he's still, yeah, because he come back as this, but then you're still like, you get a little older, you do some moves, it's been some time, and you're like, you know, I'm not feeling that. I don't want to do that. I want to do this. You know, even, it don't matter how old you are when you start wrestling or you finally break into um, the mainstream part of wrestling, you still got some maturing to do, no matter how age, how old you are when you get in. Um, so I, I'm, I'm liking this. This this match was a good paced match. It won't too fast. It won't too slow. They didn't do stupid stuff. It was a great showcase for Wada. Yes. You got to see all of that stuff. But at the end, it goes to Hiromu, who landed Time Bomb 2 and got the 1-2-3. Oh, I'll see the include both of both Hiromu and Wata went on excursion in Mexico. So they got a lot large dose of lucha in them, but they didn't overdo it. Yes, they didn't do it like like Robbie Eagles and Doki. Yeah, it wasn't like that. You got a taste. You got but there was taste. also damage done during that day. It just wasn't, we're leaping and twirling. No. And, yeah, they and were, we're doing the stutter step. They were, you know, trying to actually do, do damage to the opponent for a win. This next match is going to be real good, I, mm-hmm. think. I think. I think so, too. I think so. Because it's, 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 it's our favorite versus one of, one of our, how, how can I say, highly sympathetic, but a growing favorite. So that's going to be good. But, um, for this match and yes this is best of the super juniors day eight this is day eight this is it's day it's got to be day eight it's got to be because we did seven <laughs> we did seven so we're going to get on to the next match so let's roll all right this is our main event bushi versus el desperado this is a very good match Although Bushi was on the defense most of the time, he performed really well. He was not the weakest link tonight. Bushi showed up. Yeah, he did. He main evented and he definitely showed up. He, if you got the basics down, don't think about all these high spot moves. No. Legitimately, everyone, just think about it. If you got the basics down and you know how to, you know, uh, 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 pull a match out instead of just going through the motions and just doing moves for the move's sake or just I do these moves to pop the crowd. No, if you got the basics down, the fundamentals, you know, you've, you, you've got your entertainment, you've got your, you know, steady basic moves, body slam, headlocks, headlock takeover, side headlocks, front headlocks, a suplex, an arm drag, hip toss. If you got these basics down, you can honestly have a full-fledged, good-looking wrestling match. And although Bushi could do so much more than this, and he does, but these are the things that help all of the greats put on these spectacular five-star, 25, 35, 45, and and 60-minute long matches. So, with that being said, I wish Bushi had done that. (laughs) (laughs) Bushi hit an awesome Tope Suicida. He didn't splat flat on him like Quinn McKay, but he Uh hit him and he he took a blow. Yeah. Um, El Desperado decided to pay him back and he flipped over the ropes onto Bushi and his legs ended up in the, the, the guard railing it little, little that scared me. Not going to lie, he could snap a femur like it's nothing. And he won't feel it until a second later. Because he'd hit, and the body is jarring from hitting the, 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 the wrestler in the ground, and you hadn't realized, I just snapped my leg in half. Mm-hmm. You yep. know, it, it, it'll come in about a second later. You'll be like, oh, no. But Desperado worked feverishly on, um, on Bushy, Bushy's knee. He, El Desperado knows how to attack a limb. He, he does. It's beautiful. Because he was softening him up for that stretch muffler. And he got him in a stretch muffler about three times. 
Bushi would not tap, but he also couldn't get just perfect where he's got the knee and both hands and them all arched back in a terrible position. He wasn't able to get that. He couldn't get and, and Bushi was like, I've, I've got it scouted enough. Mm-hmm. Um, this, th- th- this, this show that, that both of them know how to work a leg, but El Desperado just, he just gnawed on it. <laughs> he had a shin breaker, dragon screw combination that led into that chain right into the stretch muffler. And El Desperado, he'll put that muffler on and he just start cranking on it. Yes. I love that. I ain't going to lie. That, that gets me in my feels. I love mm. that. Ooh. I get goosebumps on that. He just start cranking on it. Just, just, just cranking that ankle, cranking it, cranking that knee. Love it every time. It, it adds element to it. and lets you know, okay, I ain't got you in the main move. But I'm messing you up. Mm-hmm. I likes it. Um, also, also Desby, he hit a frog splash. Yeah. And it won't good. Mm-hmm. It won't good. Because I was, I, was I was playing Final Fantasy, and I was just looking to see what I got to kill. And next thing you know, now you're, boof. It's, just, it's a certain sound of the mat when someone fucks up. A little bit on a dive it's a sound that the mate the mat makes and i heard it and the referee not the referee but the the commentators they popped cedro slightly popped on it and she's like i think his knees caught most and i was like was a diving knee because i listened to the commentary and they didn't say diving knee press they said diving body press but i looked back at it frog splash and yeah he landed knees first on the mat he took all of it it looked it looked bad and it sounded bad i i it's gonna be a little bit before he can start feeling that but hopefully hopefully something that they can ice down maybe you know get some of the because i'm sure he's got to have a little swelling after that it looked bad it was beautiful flying through the air though yes yes you know uh like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's not the fall I'm concerned about. It's that sudden stop that bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love that one so much. But this match was, honestly, I can, get, I can, I can honestly say this is a five-star match. This is a five-star match. It ain't going to feel like it. It ain't going to seem like it because it doesn't have all the flippy flop and stuff that people love. But these two worked beautifully. Mm-hmm. I could not see cooperation. And if there was, it was just so tiny, it doesn't really matter. Um, they both got their shit in, but they did it in the right spots. Not just doing it in the same order you would see in normal matches. No, it was they, they switched things up. They did things so much deeper into the match. They they counted each other's moves. They built back up almost from a nil. That lets you know when something's going on. They built it back up. And look, if you don't score this as a five star, you could easily say four and a half. Easy. But ultimately, El Desperado, he got that 180 butterfly face buster on. And he got the pin. Yep. And when he now here's my issue. When he he got the move, bam, turned him over. I don't, it's just it seems flat. I know it's, I know the crowd can't make noise, but that's it's not what I'm talking about. It just seemed like as soon as the ref hit that mat for one, the air just drained away from everything, and it was like someone laid down and the other person covered them just to do it, and the ref counted three because well, there's a body on a body. Count three. It's weird. I don't know anyone else that saw this match. Did you get the same feeling? You know, just like, okay, boom, turn over. One, two, 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 three, 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 three. Obvious. It's weird. I don't understand. Maybe, maybe it was just my emotions at the time. But it just seemed like it just, bleh. But. That 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 doesn't really take. That's just how I was feeling. That don't mean that's how it it was. I might look back at it later and just be like, "Oh crap, this is good." Probably the sound Bushy's back made when he hit. I mean, <laughs> <the> front. <laughs> wow. 
And, and, and at the same time, it's like, uh, I'm going to call it out. Because you know that's his original primary finisher. And they've gone through everything else. So it's like elementary, this guy has lost now. And I think that's really what it was. There's no hope of a kick out. Honestly, there was no hope of him winning. Not with the damage he had taken. I, I, but also it's El Desperado. Well, this is fucked up. It was more that it was Bushi. Although Bushi has been performing well, he's just... It's not the norm. And so they pin him up against the IWGP, you know, junior heavyweight champion of it. Honestly, everyone else is beating Desperado. Why can't Bushi? Not everyone else. I, I, I know. I'm being saying. hyperbolic. But, yeah, it just seems like half the roster on this junior tournament has beaten Desperado. This is why I don't think your champion should be in tournaments. I agree. But I have enjoyed watching Despy. We got more Despy in this tournament than we ever get. And I'll be honest with you, it's not enough. It's not enough Despy. They, 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 they never showcase Despy. That's why I'm like, you know, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we were going to make it through all of this one. This, we did this in one day after finishing up the World Tag League of Day 7. Again, I apologize. But we're going to get our shit straight, all right? So, look, not to hold y'all up because it's been probably close to an hour or over an hour for this review. But thank y'all, okay? So, this has been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Best of the Super Juniors, Day 8. Thank you for your time, patience, and energy. Thank you for all your understandings of our flubs and fuck-ups. Thank you. For those that have forgiven us, thank you. <laughs> we are going to get our act together. All right? It, it really isn't our fault, but we'll get our act together. <laughs> we, we, we will do better. We will do better for you. So, thank you very, very much. So, you all be safe out there. Take care of yourselves, your family, your neighbors, and all of that. All right? So, Good night and see you next time.